everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. My name is James L. Allen. L stands for Leroy, by the way, okay? But uh, I'm a cook, and we're, this is a cooking and variety show, so we're going to have cooks on, we're going to have musicians, we'll have some political figures, just, and besides chefs from Cordon Bleu and other places, we're going to have some housewives, some of the best cooks in the world are housewives, they do it every day on a regular basis, uh, but I appreciate you tuning in, tell your, your friends and family about us, we're starting to get a lot of hits on our show, and um, if you want to be in our audience sometime, hey. Give me a call, 903-917-6082, and come on out and have fun with us, okay? And you can be some of our official food tasters. Hi, I'm Natanya Richards from Simply Delicious Catering, and today we're going to make chicken alfredo. Well, actually, we're going to make fettuccine alfredo, and we're going to add chicken and many other things. So I'm going to show you how to make a simple dish and build on to it and then change it completely. So stick with me, and we'll get started soon. But before we get started, I have to tell you this story. I have girlfriends, and I said girlfriends plural, because they always make fettuccine sauce out of a jar or out of a box. And I've been trying to tell them how simple it is. Well... Now they'll be able to see for themselves, and you will too. So first we're gonna do is salt our water for the pasta. Come join me. Okay, so I have a pot of water, and what we're gonna do is add a lot of salt. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, this is too much salt. But really what we want to do is make this almost like sea water. It's gonna bring out the flavor in the pasta, and it's gonna be so much better. You'll like it. We're going to wait for that to boil. In the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about building the sauce. Now we're going to start off with a heavy whipping cream. So a lot of people use heavy whipping cream or whipping cream, or you can use half and half if you want to cut back on those calories. I use the whipping cream today. And then we're going to add butter. So let's start building our sauce. Let me add this butter in here. So we're going to wait for the butter to melt down a little bit before we add the cream. And then simple ingredients for the basic fettuccine sauce. White pepper, a little pinch of salt, and nutmeg. Now you heard me say a little pinch and I have these measuring spoons. I don't usually use them, but for those that are uncomfortable with grabbing a pinch or a dash, or sometimes it says a smidgen, these measuring spoons are great. They come in smidgen, dash, and pinch. So you'll love them. I get them from Demurl. So right now we're gonna use actually the smidgen and a dash. But let's start adding the cream. Now, I want to add just a smidgen of nutmeg. and a dash of white pepper. And a little tiny pinch of salt. Maybe a little pinch more. Now the reason I don't add that much salt is, is because Parmesan cheese has a lot of natural salt in it. So you gotta be careful with that. You don't want your food over salted. Plus the pasta. Remember I said we want our water to taste like seawater because it gives the pasta more flavor? So the pasta will absorb some of that salt and taste great, but again, you don't want to keep adding salt and overpower your dish. It ends up ruining everything. So 
So while that is just simmering on low and we're waiting for the water to boil, what we're gonna do is cut up some chicken. Now I'm taking a chicken breast and I'm cutting it in half. And I'm just gonna do some strips. Okay, so what we're gonna do while the sauce is still simmering and we're waiting for the water to boil is saute some of this chicken. Now we're only gonna use half because like I said, we're gonna make many versions of the same dish. Here we go. Now while that's cooking, I have a mixture that I make of salt, pepper, and garlic that I use to season up a lot of my food. And we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on there. And I see our water is starting to boil. So we're gonna add our fettuccine pasta. And fettuccine has a habit of sticking, so it's really important that you make sure you maneuver it around a bit to prevent that from happening. Okay, so we have drained our pasta, we've cleaned up, we're starting fresh, and we're gonna take our chicken off right now. All right, so I have some flat leaf parsley and what we're going to do is just cut a little bit up. Whew, let's get some nice leaves here. We don't want too much of the stem. And I like to roll it up when I'm chopping it because, or chiffonade is the appropriate term. So what I'm gonna do is grate up some of the cheese into the pasta. I love the smell of this cheese. And you can be creative, you can use different cheeses. Uh, there's a lot of a good Italian hard cheeses out there. Picorino Romano, Asiago, which is a little bit softer, but great flavor. And we're gonna come back to that because now I'm gonna add some of the sauce. And you just toss it around. 
and let's add more cheese. See how it coats over the noodle? The pasta. <laughs> Who says noodles anymore? Okay, so we have your basic fettuccine alfredo. And I'm gonna set this aside because this is the basic step. Let's add something else. The chicken. And give that a nice toss. So right now, we're gonna add even another step. We're gonna add some mushrooms. Pinch of my seasoning. Okay, so here are my mushrooms. And what I'm gonna do is add it a little bit to the cream that I have remaining. Stir that around a little bit. Let all that goodness absorb. And let's place this on here. So we've added mushrooms. I'm going to top it with a few sun-dried tomatoes. Add some shaved Parmesan cheese and a little parsley. Now doesn't that look delicious? So again, we took a basic Alfredo sauce, added chicken, and you can add shrimp or even ham if you'd like, a good smoked ham. Build on it by adding mushrooms. You can add spinach, broccoli, or sun-dried tomatoes and make it simply delicious. But we're not stopping here. We're gonna change this whole dish completely. Okay, so what I have here is some chicken andouille sausage. Now you can get pork andouille. I'm sure they have beef andouille, but we're gonna use chicken and andouille. And I'm just gonna slice it. And then we're gonna saute it. Now again, we already have the basic sauce, so you know how to make the basic Alfredo sauce. And that's all it is for that. Look at the colors. I wish you could smell the andouille sausage. You can smell all the spices and they're just beautiful. So much flavor. 
and surprisingly, you'll love the chicken. Okay, so I have already peeled and deveined some shrimp as well, but we're gonna start off with just this sausage. So we're gonna add the andouille sausage, and like I said, it's chicken andouille, and you don't lose any of the flavor by having it be chicken. So go ahead and try it. Look in your local supermarket. I'm sure you can find it. Ready? Here we go. And what we're gonna do is let that cook and just simmer for a while. Separate my little pieces here. Okay, I separated my pieces and I am just gonna let that cook and simmer for a while. Okay, so this is another batch of the sauce and I'm just stirring it up, making sure that the butter and the cream does not separate. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is add this to the side for a moment. And in the same pan, I'm gonna go ahead and add my shrimp because I do want my shrimp to capture some more of that flavor as well from the andouille. and we'll let that cook. Okay, first let's add a pinch to our fettuccine sauce. And as our shrimp cooks, We're gonna add a pinch of this as well. And then we're gonna add some cheese. Lots of cheese. Our shrimp is done, let's put this to the side. and let that cool down. Okay, so next, let's add the chicken. And again, we left the same seasonings in the pan so that the chicken could absorb it all. It's gonna taste great. We're gonna add a pinch of Cajun seasoning. Okay, I lied. <laughs> A few pinches. <laughs> and I like cutting it up into strips, but you don't have to. You can use cubes if that's easier for you, bite-sized pieces. So over here, I'm gonna grate up some more Parmesan cheese. and we can go ahead and start adding this in. I'm 
My daughter, Catherine, makes this dish and it's fantastic. Let's check on this chicken. It is just about ready. I'm going to sprinkle a little more Cajun spice in here. and plate. And doesn't that look simply delicious? Remember, we started from a basic fettuccine sauce and then we added chicken. So now you have the recipe for a chicken fettuccine. We kicked it up a notch and we added some mushrooms and some sun-dried tomatoes. Then we took this and made it into this by simply adding some Cajun spices, andouille sausage, shrimp, and chicken. One simple recipe and look at all the possibilities. Make a shrimp and broccoli fettuccine or maybe a chicken or chicken and spinach. Make it your own. Make it Simply Delicious. If you need to reach me, remember, contact me at Simply Delicious Catering. You can reach me on Facebook, Simply Delicious Catering, Chef Natanya Richards, or you can contact me by email at one, that's the number one, Simply Delicious Catering at gmail.com. And you can reach me at my phone number, 916 519 6262. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, keep making it simply delicious and stay hungry, my friends. Hi, I'm James Williams. I'm here to sing a song for you today. I'm an a cappella singer, which basically means uh, no accompaniment. Uh, I like singing songs this way because you can really get into the lyrics, and uh, that's really important to me. And I hope you'll understand and enjoy. Oh, once in a lifetime, a man knows a moment. One wonderful moment when fate takes his hand. And this is my moment, my once in a lifetime, to go and explore a new and exciting land. For once in my lifetime, I feel like a giant. I soar like an eagle, as though I had wings. And this is my moment, my once in a lifetime. And though it may be just once in a lifetime, I'm gonna do great things. Oh, once in a lifetime, I feel like a giant. You know I soar like an eagle, as though I had wings. And this is my moment. My destiny calls me, and though it may be 
just once in a lifetime I'm gonna do great things. Hi everyone, I'm James Dell Allen. I'm here with a good friend of mine from Davis. Uh, his name is James Williams. James, I'm glad you could make it today. Thank okay. you, Mr. Allen. Glad to be here. Now, I met James, it was, it's been over a year ago, okay, yes. at the International House in uh, Davis, yes. uh, where a friend of mine was performing also, and James was performing in a trio, a jazz trio was there, too. <laughs> yeah. Now, I understand you guys are doing some shows together now, too. Oh, right? yeah. Le every now and then. They're well, hard-working hey, men. <laughs> you're like, uh, you guys are like a glove. I, I, you know, I told you, I said, you guys yeah. need to get together, because they sound good, you sound good. Hey. Yeah. Hey, I told them that, and uh, hopefully pretty soon. Okay, how long have you been singing? How long have you been interested in music? Well, uh, I was uh, educated in Catholic school, so there was lots of singing okay. and lots of choruses and choirs throughout my life. Um, I got started in a cappella singing when I uh, was recruited for the uh, American River College Vocal Jazz Ensemble. Okay. It was a 19-voice chorus, and uh, we did mostly a cappella singing of uh, jazz standards, but we also had backing from uh, the very famous Joe Gilman Trio. Oh, okay. And uh, once you've sung with them, it's really hard to sing alone again, okay. but uh, I really like the a cappella singing. You get the lyrics, and that's the heart of every song. Well, I got a group of young men, I guess they're in their early 20s, and uh, I had them on my radio show, and uh, I hadn't heard them before. I knew that their manager, she brought them down, and I had to go into another office, and I was coming down the hall, and my uh, daughter's uh, boyfriend was doing a show right after mine. He was my engineer. Mm -hmm. And I heard these guys singing. And I'm like, he's playing Boys to Men. And I turned the corner. It wasn't. It was him. <laughs> I love a cappella. Okay. All right. Now, Good tell us me. what's happening, the things you got going at the International House. Well, we're probably going to have our, we haven't gotten the green light on it just yet, but uh, we usually do a, an end of the year program to be the kickoff for uh, my cross-cultural music and open mic series called Sundays at I House. So our show will probably be on December the 28th. That's the last Sunday of December. Okay. So it's the uh, kickoff to that program and uh, just a little pre-celebration of uh, the end of the year for the older set who doesn't stay out so late. <laughs> okay, well folks, look on my Facebook and on James and we'll keep you posted to things that are happening at the International House. Okay? Thank you so much. I, cause I appreciate you coming in today. Hey, you sound good as usual. Thank okay. you. It's been my pleasure. Uh, so you're going to sing another song for us? Yeah, I think I will. Okay, hey, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, hey, I always enjoy listening to you sing. You know that. I mean, that's why you're here today because I like your singing. Thank <laughs> okay? you so much. I, I remember I was saying, I said, look, you come, I'm going to feed you. You said, well, not until after I sing. <laughs> but hey. Yeah. Thanks again for coming. Thank Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. My pleasure. Hey, it's James Williams again, here to sing you one more song for today. Uh, I'm going to end with On a Clear Day. Ba-da, ba ya da do day On a clear day Rise and look around you and you'll see who you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you that the glow of your being outshines every star you'll feel part of every mountain sea and shore and you can hear from far and near a world you never heard before and on a clear day on that clear day you can see forever and ever more. Da da do da ya do do day. Da 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 ya do 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 day. 
ba do da da do a da do do da da do a da do da ya do 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 da 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 ya do 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 da ba do da do a da ba do da 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 do a. You'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore, and you can hear from far and near a world you never heard before. And on a clear day. On that clear day, you can see forever and ever and ever and ever. Ooh, 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 do do? We're gonna see forever. We're gonna see forever more. Yes, on that clear day. Hi everybody, I'm here with two good friends of mine. Uh, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Uh, I know Chef Ernesto, I'm gonna turn it over to you, tell about your lovely wife. Hi, I'm Chef Ernesto Hales, and this is my lovely wife, Pastor Roxanne Hales. Now, great to be here. Pastor? Yes. You're originally from the Bay Area? I am from the Bay Area, born oh. and raised. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long have you been involved in the ministry? I know you guys have got, you and Ernesto both, you've got blog shows and mm -hmm. you've got the TV show just started, yes. Access mm -hmm. Sacramento, and Ernesto, yes. you started down in, you know, that's my home territory too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But uh, how do you like it so far? I like it, I like it. We're doing our radio shows and I've launched my television show there and that's under our umbrella, yes. um, our ministry, Kingdom Remnant Ministries and Media Projects. Okay. And so it's keeping me very busy. Okay, <laughs> now, did your folks bring you up in the church, or is this just something you just decided to do yourself growing up, or what? Oh, my grandpa oh, okay. was a pastor down in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, okay. And when my grandparents moved from Louisiana to Little Rock, Arkansas, he bought the land mm -hmm. and built his church from the ground up. Okay. Yes. Well, it yes. sounds like my grandfather, he was mm -hmm. a Methodist minister, and mm -hmm. I saw my mom's side and my great-great-grandfather, Richard Allen. He started mm -hmm. the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Yes, I remember you telling us. But uh, tell us more about your ministry. Well, I've been in ministry over 30 years now, and um, it's very interesting <laughs> the journey that God has had me on. But I think um, I did evangelistic work for about 11 years, uh, mission, more mission on, on the mission field for 11 years. I did evangelistic work for five years. Then I went back to the church that I grew up in, in West Oakland, and was one of the ministers um, on staff there as an associate minister for about five years. Then I started my own church, which was called Irvington Christian Fellowship Church okay. and Ministries um, right outside of San Jose in the Fremont area, which was in the Irvington District of Fremont. That's the reason mm -hmm. it was called Irvington Christian Fellowship. And then we started it in my home. And then okay. we moved it to a senior center. Okay. And then I went on a sabbatical okay. for about a year or so. When I got back to Fremont, moved, came back to the Bay Area, I worked at a battered women's shelter as a residential manager and counselor for about a year or so. And then my friends in Fremont were starting their church, which is called Voice of Triumph, and I was one of the elders that okay. helped to start that church. So I've actually done three church plants 
But you know, I always say God set me up. I never knew what I was doing. He just told me to do something, I went and did it. So I was doing apostolic work before I even knew it. <laughs> well, a lot yes. of times I find that, you know, he's always got a master plan for us. Oh, okay? yeah. Always. We're all here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't realize that purpose till we involved off into it. Mm -hmm. just like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And so uh, on my journeys, I lived in Portugal for almost two years, helped okay. to start a church there in Portugal in a rock cave. That was very oh, okay. interesting. Yeah, that sounds yeah. interesting. And yes, it does. Some of my mission journeys have been Greece. I've been to Israel. It's, okay. been, it's been exciting. Yeah. Now, I've always wanted to travel more. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of travel around this country. I've been to Mexico and Canada, but I'd always wanted to go to other countries. That sounds like a good experience. Yeah? Yes, yes. A teaching type ex learning experience. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm excited because I just got a, um, an invitation Mm -hmm. I'm going to be going to, it's called Virgin Island, part of Lagos, Nigeria in December. Oh, okay. I'm going to be one of the speakers. They've asked me to come and do the media, and okay. um, I'm going to teach a workshop there, and it's going to be over 30 um, countries represented there. Okay, so before I'm you excited. take off for that, I'd like to have you back on the show, too. Oh, I'd okay. love to be back, yes. Okay. Ernesto, you're quiet over there, and I know oh, you, yes. Ernesto, and I know you're not <laughs> quiet, okay? You run your mouth just like I do, okay? Hey, I yeah. dare not interrupt the pastor. <laughs> I hear you. But uh, Chef Ernesto yes. and I, we met mm -hmm. a while back, and uh, he's an excellent cook, and uh, you taught at, uh, was it Cordon Bleu? Yes. Okay, I thought that's what you had told me before. You yes, know? absolutely. I, I, I uh, was chef instructor at Le Cordon Bleu here in Sacramento. Okay. And I was also chef instructor here in Job Corps in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And I created a syllabus in Job Corps to show students how math applies to my job, because a lot of them didn't even know how to do simple math. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I had to teach a math class. Then I had to teach how math applies to being a chef. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the lessons that they learned was a chef tells a cook what to do. That's the difference between a chef and a cook. Mm -hmm. But a chef still has to be a great cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has to cook better than anybody in his crew. Mm -hmm. And you have to know math. And the reason why you have to know math is because if you have a cake recipe, and let's see the recipe yields eight. Mm -hmm. And I come to you and I say, hey, look, man, I got a wedding, 300 people. I have to, you have to be able to mathematically convert that recipe so you can have the original recipe serving it at the party and not mess with the integrity of the recipes. Yeah. Well, I know what you mean. It's just like cooking for my kids growing up. I did 90% of the cooking. Oh, uh, yeah. My wife and I have been together for 38 years, and I've done the okay. majority of the cooking. It's just like, like I was talking to the, a little while ago about making chicken and dumplings. Okay, well, I know if it's four of us, I'm going to put three cups of flour in. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, like you say, you put according to the people that, you know, you have to do. And like Absolutely. you say, not change the flavor and the integrity of what it tastes like. Right, right, right. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. what do you guys have? I know what you've got planned for the future. And you've got your show and you've got your blog show. Tell them about your blog show. Okay, I, have, I actually have two shows. I have a radio show called Food Talk with Chef Ernesto, mm -hmm. and that is on Access TV, and that airs every Friday at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay. And I also have another show called Food Talk with Chef Ernesto, and that is on Blog Talk Radio. Now, my show it, earlier in the day, that, you know, we, do, we just do talking, we do teachings, we have guest chefs. But my show later, which airs at 6 p.m., all time specific, uh, that show I invite guest chefs from all over the country and even all over the world. I, I, I'm gone international now. And it's funny because I'm getting invites to go to different countries to talk to chefs and mm -hmm. to uh, lecture and to do food. Uh, what do you cooking say? Cooking contest. Co uh, yeah. For, uh, okay. Judge. Judge. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. A judge for cooking contests and stuff well, like that. Well, you know, so. I spoke to you about what well, so we're trying to get from cooking cook-offs together too. Yes, 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 yes. I say bring it on. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Well, hey, I can't wait they're to not have afraid you of down, losing, bring it on. I, I've tasted some of your food. I can't wait to have you down here on the show preparing. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. oh, just yeah. let me know, and hey, we'll make time available. Absolutely. You know, I'm there when you, whenever you need me, brother. Okay, I appreciate yes. it. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I thoroughly enjoy having a chef. I know. Or a hubby. It's what? like going to the restaurant every day. Every night. Well, you know, it, it's it's funny because I have I, I've been in a 
this business for 34 years. Yes. My dad was a chef, my grandfather was a chef, and my great-grandfather was chefs as well. But That's I in started DNA, in, yeah, I was born in this business. So I started in the Army. My MOS was 94 Bravo in the mm -hmm. Army during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had a choice out of juvenile hall. And I'm telling you, man, I acted up. I really acted up. But once I got out of juvenile hall that last time, and I went into the army, I was around older people, and, and, and really, they taught me the way to go. So I haven't been in trouble since then. But I've been, I've been cooking since then. So okay. it's, well, I find in my cooking, like I tell folks, I just did my bio for my website. When I'm really stressed, I head for the kitchen, OK? And when I come out, I feel a lot better. It mm -hmm. takes a lot off of me, you know, and I enjoy cooking. Like I said, I'm just that I'm at the age now, I've done it so much. Mm -hmm. I don't care to cook as much as I did. Yeah. But yeah. in college, I never had any problem getting a roommate because most of the guys couldn't cook. And I would tell them, I'll cook, but I'm not doing dishes. Okay? You know, <laughs> you and, guys and, and I that. get that. You know, there's nothing like taking a pan and heating it to the desired temperature, then adding a little olive oil to it, then adding some chopped garlic. Mm. And as the garlic singes, you add some sliced onions. And as onions caramelize, you take about as much as you want of your favorite wine. You could pour as much as the whole bottle in if you want. But I suggest you pour about maybe a cup, cup and a half of wine and allow it to simmer mm. until every drop of liquid is gone. What happens is that this so wine in cooks the into the aromatics, okay. and the aromatics are actually swollen with wine flavor. All the alcohol is cooked out, but the flavor is right it's there, there. and if, especially if it's a good wine. Now, if you cook with fresh herbs, mm -hmm. then at this time, you add fresh herbs, because fresh herbs, if you cook too long, they'll turn bitter. Mm -hmm. So at this time, you add your basil, you julienne it, and throw it in there, and throw a little bit more wine in, maybe mm -hmm. about a quarter cup, mm -hmm. and allow that to just simmer until it all just reduces down to nothing. Then you can add your tomato sauce. Now, the reason why I add tomato sauce is because it's already do reduced. But if I make fresh tomato sauce, from the, from the fresh tomato, then what I do is I take a tomato, peel it, squeeze all the juice out, cook it, pour the extra juice off, and cook, and just allow it to cook. That takes hours. When you open a can of tomato sauce, it's already reduced. It, it, when, you, when you add it to that flavored aromatics, then it usually takes about 20 more minutes. But if you cook it from scratch, then you want to cook your tomatoes first, make a sauce, which takes hours, mm -hmm. then add those aromatics to that sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it is wonderful, and it is nothing like doing that. It is mm -hmm. so relaxing. It sounds good, but I want to see you doing it here oh, in my kitchen. Bring okay. it on. Bring, bring it on, now, I say. I, one of my sponsors of the show is Lodge Cast Iron Cookware. There's only one company in, in the United States now that makes cast iron cookware. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've been reading, and, and they've been sending me information, and like they've got enamel type. It's not just the black cast iron anymore, mm -hmm. too. But uh, they were saying with your cast iron skillet, you never heat it over medium heat, okay? Because, you know, it holds the heat really well, mm -hmm. okay? But... Uh, I'm going to be setting up a display, and I want you to come in. I want you to be the first one to try my cookbook. Bring it out. out. Okay. Yes. I will. I will. Yes. I will. I've heard that it's really excellent to yeah. cook with that cookbook. Well, yeah. in the country where I grew up, that's all we had was cast iron. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And I have like, a lot of There are companies out there now that make cast iron, but they don't make it commercial. They make it for collectors. Right. Lodge is out of Tennessee, and they're the only mm -hmm. ones that make it for the consumer. Yeah. Now, I called them three times. Yeah. The two times they turned me down because no one but Target and Walmart sell their product. Oh. Well, I saw one of the skillets in there the other day, and I, uh, I called the guy up, I said, well, now look, if I can have chefs from Cordon Bleu on my show, why can't you let me use your product as a sponsor? I got an email the next day, I fill out the paperwork, now it's Walmart, Target, and James Allen. Okay. All right. Amen. All right. There you go. But, uh, awesome. Cordon Bleu. <laughs> but hey, I'm glad you guys came by today. You know, yes. I appreciate it, and you'll be back, and okay. you'll be cooking here. Absolutely. Okay, and you'll be ministry okay yes, that's and I'd exciting. like to and before we leave I'd like for you to lead us in a word of prayer okay oh, most definitely all righty father God we just come before you and we yes, thank Lord. you we praise you we glorify you and we honor you today we thank you father God for this television um, broadcast on today yes, father Lord. we thank you for brother James Allen and his friendship father God we fa thank you for the doors that you have opened for him Father God, and we pray, Father, that you would continue to bless 
all of his endeavors, all of his vision, all of the things that he desires to do, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for him and his wife and his family continue to bring an increase in their lives. We thank you, Father God, for the camera crew and um, the gentleman that was here today singing and the other interview that went forth, Father God. And we just forever give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Father, we pray for those that are watching today and pray, Father, that something has been said that will encourage them and bless them across the airways. And we just thank you, Father God, again, for all that you're doing. And we forever give you all the praise, glory, and honor. For Christ's sake, Yeshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Um, I think we're going to give our contact information. Sure, all sure. Alrighty. Um, you can reach me. The, the best way to reach me is probably on Facebook. Um, my timeline is Pastor Roxanne Parks Hales. And then I actually have a radio page for the three radio shows that I have, and we're also posting our television there. And that is This Is Your Season Radio. You have to put the word radio to get that page. Okay? Yes, yes. And then I'm on all the other um, social networks, LinkedIn. Um, my Twitter is at Radio TV Movie. Yeah. And um, if you want to reach me by email, Pastor Roxy 2007 at yahoo.com. P A S T O R O X Y 2007 at yahoo.com. All right. And the best way to reach me is Chef Ernesto on Facebook. That will be my wall. And if you're looking for my page, my radio page, that will be Food Talk with Chef Ernesto. And when you get there, like that page. I could use some more lights. Yes, because <laughs> yeah. you're the coolest chef on the planet. Oh, I am the coolest chef on the planet, <laughs> and that's my hook. The uh, Chef Ernesto, food talk with Chef Ernesto, the coolest chef on the planet. And if you ever have, if you ever, if you don't want to go to Facebook, then just Google the coolest chef on the planet, and there'll be the information for all my shows. All right. Yeah.